Hi everyone, Eric at Retro Handheld Guides, and today we'll be taking a quick look at some of the best Android emulator front ends available. There have been a ton of Android based retro handhelds released in the last few years. While Android based devices are generally more powerful and flexible, the main downside of using an Android handheld is that they are not as easy to set up. Unlike Linux handhelds with custom firmware like ArcOS or Betasera that come with all of the emulators pre installed and wrapped up in a neat little console like menu to browse and launch all of your games. Android handhelds usually require you to download and configure your own emulator apps, and each system usually has a different app to launch your games. If you want a more console-like menu that allows you to browse and launch all of your games from a single interface, you'll need an Android emulator front end. So let's explore some of the best Android emulator front ends that I've found so far. So first up, we're going to take a look at Daijisho. Daijisho is free and available on the Google Play Store. It's also probably one of the most popular Android emulator front ends in the retro handheld gaming community. As you can see, it supports a number of different Android emulator apps uh, and systems. As well, it also has native touchscreen and controller support, so you can easily navigate through systems using the left and right bumper and the tabs using the left and right triggers. You can also use your D-pad and your joysticks to navigate through the various buttons. It has a number of different features, including a number of different themes. So if you wanted to change the backgrounds here, you can. Um, additionally, you can also have a number of different layouts. So if you wanted to use a list screen or a grid screen, then you can switch between each. As you can see, the system also has a built-in scraper, so for downloading box art as well as screenshots, it's all available within the system uh, and automatically set up. The nice thing about the Daijisho front end is it also integrates with uh, Android apps, so if you wanted to have uh, Android games on here, then you can easily launch those from directly within the Daijisho uh, system. Setup is very easy. Uh, you can easily download your system that you want to use and then connect it to the emulator app that you're going to be using as a default. Uh, the system does also support uh, allowing you to select individual apps for your different games. So if you have games that run better in Dolphin MMJR2 as an example versus Dolphin uh, that you want to use your default, you can easily set that on a per game basis. Uh, Daijisho is also a native Android app, which means that it can be set as your home launcher, connected directly to the home button on your console, or it can also be launched directly when you start up your system, so that you can navigate and find all of your games as soon as you turn on the Android system. The next front end I want to take a look at is called the Beacon Game Launcher. Now this one is available for a small one-time fee through the Google Play Store. It'll cost a couple bucks, I think. It supports all of the emulated systems on Android, as well as has native touchscreen and controller support. So you simply scroll through the various systems using your left and right bumpers and using the D-pad to find the different uh, games that you want to launch. It doesn't have very many themes. Uh, one of the beautiful things about the uh, Beacon Game Launcher is that it's actually very minimalistic. Uh, which is uh, ideal for me. I love uh, the simplistic design of it uh, and how easy it is to use. Uh, so it doesn't have uh, any themes other than changing some color schemes, uh, but it does have a number of different layouts including the gallery uh, or the list um, and then a grid view uh, and a, uh, a gallery that allows you to just scroll through your various games. Uh, so this one does have built-in box art scraping uh, from a number of different sources. Uh, so you can see here it does have your box art. Um, and it also does allow you to launch uh, Android apps using the B button. You can go directly to all of your various Android apps available. The setup is quite easy. Uh, you can easily connect the uh, systems to the apps that you want to use to launch. It does also support uh, individual game uh, app launches. So if you had, again, a specific app that you wanted to use for uh, a different game, then you can uh, use that as well. Uh, Beacon Game Launcher is a native Android app, so this one can easily be connected to your home button or uh, launch directly from startup. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Emulation Station Desktop Edition Android Emulator Front End. 
Now this one is not technically free, it's available uh, via a Patreon subscription. Uh, however, all you need is a one month subscription to download the initial app. Uh, and from there you can cancel your subscription and all of the updates are going to be made available uh, to you whether you have a subscription or not uh, after that initial uh, download. Now this one is fairly new to the um, Android environment, however it has been available for quite a long time on the Linux environment. Uh, so if you have a Linux handheld, uh, you'll be immediately familiar with uh, much of the layout and uh, the usage of the emulation station. It does have built-in controller support. Uh, there is no native touchscreen support, but uh, you can add a on-screen display to mimic a controller using the touchscreen, uh, so that's available for you as well. It does feature a number of different themes uh, available to you, uh, so you can easily download a number of themes directly from within the system, uh, and each theme has its own layout, so you can easily go through and find various layouts available for you. So there's tons of different customization options available there. It also has built-in uh, box art scraping, so you can download box art, you can download screenshots, uh, titles, uh, as well as the manuals, uh, which is a nice little feature available here. So if you wanted to access any of the manuals while you're in game, uh, you can do that using the emulation station front end. Now the setup on this one is a little bit more difficult. Uh, it doesn't allow you to just drop your ROMs wherever you want. It does require a very specific uh, folder structure, so just keep that in mind. But when you create the app for the first time, it does create that folder structure for you uh, automatically. And you'll just need to make sure your ROMs are organized into the correct folders. Now, the emulation station is not a native Android app, which means that it cannot be directly connected as a home launcher, um, which means that you can't use your home button. It also will not launch automatically through uh, opening up your system for the first time. However, there are third-party apps that can assist you with this if you wanted to make it your uh, default launcher. Overall, Emulation Station is uh, fairly new, but it is quite established in other environments, and it does have a slick and easy-to-use interface. Uh, and if you are familiar with the Linux uh, operating system uh, front end, then uh, you should be immediately at home with the Emulation Station front end. The next Android emulator front end that I wanted to show you is Plane Launcher. Plane Launcher is exactly that. It is a bare bones minimalistic launcher that allows you to quickly find your games and launch them. It is available for free via their GitHub uh, and I will put a link in the description below. This one supports most of the Android emulated systems uh, as you can see here. Uh, so you can simply find your games uh, and pick your emulator and then launch your games via the simple text only menu. Now it does feature uh, controller support, so you can see I'm navigating via the D-pad on my, on my device. You can easily uh, log in and see all of your various uh, games available immediately. Now there are no themes available here. The whole point of this is that it is minimalistic. Uh, however, there are some customization options. You can change the size of the text. You can also change the uh, color of the text and the position of various aspects of the screen, but that's about it. Uh, this one does support the ability to launch Android games via one of your text menus and it does also have a clever way of allowing you to download box art. So there's no uh, box art scraping, however for each of the games if you click on the Y button you can actually look for box art uh, and what it'll do is it will open up Google and allow you to uh, search for a box art and download it and then it directly attaches that to the individual game menu. So you'll have to do it manually but then uh, once it's there, it will associate it with the games. Now the setup is qu quite easy for this. Uh, you simply pick your emulator that you want to use for the system and then from there it launches each of them. Uh, the nice thing about Plane Launcher it is, is a Android uh, app, so it means that you can also associate this with your home button as well as have it launch automatically when you launch into your system. And to round out my top five is the Reset Collection. The Reset Collection is available for you from the Google Play Store for $5 USD. As you can see, it supports a number of different emulated systems available on the Android environment. It also has controller support and touchscreen support. Now, this one doesn't have any different themes or layouts. It has just the one theme and layout, uh, which is uh, simple and easy to use. 
It does have built-in support for box art scraping, so it'll automatically find box art for you. And for some games, it'll actually try to attempt to find a video for you and download that dynamically. Uh, this one does not support uh, Android app launching. Um, the setup is quite easy. Uh, you can easily pick your uh, system that you want to add into the uh, front end, as well as the app that you want to use to launch your games. Uh, it does support per game app launches as well, so if you wanted to use a different app for your different games, then you can easily do that here. Now the uh, Reset Collection is a native Android app, which means that it also can be attached directly to your home button as well as used as your uh, Android launcher, uh, so that when you first start on the system, you are able to launch directly into the Reset Collection. All right. That rounds out my personal top five Android emulator front ends. Me personally, I'm using the Beacon Game Launcher. I love it for its simple design, it's easy to use, it has access to my Android games, and can also be set as my home launcher. Now there are many more launchers that I didn't cover here. If you're interested, be sure to check out my written guide, link in the description below. I'd love to hear what you guys are using. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please leave them below. Uh, for your favorite game launcher. I hope you enjoyed this video.